I did not start feeling sick until July 2018. At that time, I was only taking a statin and aspirin. On a long-term basis given by Dr. E of London at the beginning of 2017. I had not discussed my ongoing medical issues with any Irish doctor. I used to have chest episodes in London on average. Once in two months. I had been in Ireland for around nine weeks. So it was understandable I would feel sick. At County Westmeath, I started feeling quite tired when I woke up in the morning and found blood in my mouth on my lips and teeth. This happened after a night of sleep and it was not my gums. My saliva tasted nasty and it looked and tasted like blood and when this happened I also got a pain in the throat. At first I lived in denial of this. I remember that I had got blood in my mouth in the UK once in a while in 2018 and had lived in denial. Then blood started forming in the early hours of day morning in the mouth and it was mainly around the lips and teeth after a night's sleep. I hadn't coughed blood because it was accompanied by throat pain and burning and there were no cut or bleeding gums. I had to reasonably conclude it was not bleeding from my gums. But, on one occasion the throat pain became really severe and they took me to Tullamore Hospital. They, fast-tracked me at accident and emergency after my gasps annoyed the other patients. They admitted me into a ward where they kept me for three days before discharging me. In those three days, they, Asked me to do a treadmill test where I performed so poorly that they took me off the test. But the staff said I had performed excellently. I suppose if I trusted whatever they said, I would believe. My heart was completely normal. Which I suppose is what they wanted. I knew that I had done poorly. On the treadmill test and it caused me much distress to realize that the medics were lying about my performance in this test. A few months later, I try to access my medical records from Tullamore Hospital. They made it very difficult to access and I had to go in person by train to access them. Upon my arrival all the way from Dublin, they were unwilling to give the records. Some lady fooled me into signing I have received the records and used it to say they have given them and were refusing to duplicate them. I was crying and then somebody in medical records overruled this lady's wishes and gave the records to me to stop me from feeling like I was the world's biggest sucker. I suspected that the medical record would contain a lie that I did excellently in the treadmill test. But it didn't. It said I performed poorly. That was a relief so I could keep on believing doctors would never lie in medical records. At the hospital, they would not explain or comment on the blood in my mouth. When they decide not to address an issue, there is nothing I've been able to do about it. It's like a much stronger person competing against a weak person in a game of tiddlywinks. After three days when I was discharged, the mouth bleeding had stopped. Also, the consultant gave an injection into my chest. The needle was 6 to 12 inches long. The consultant made two nurses hold me down because I was going to scream in pain and he reckoned this was the best way to do it. It was less than comfortable and he gave two jabs. He must have known his job. Because the needle went very close to my heart without mistakes. He injected steroids. He said, once in six months I need that kind of injection to keep away the pain. The bone that is part of the rib cage which is very close to the heart had become soft. When the heart was squeezing wildly, it would move this tender bone, causing agonizing pain. The actual pain from the heart squeezing was not the total pain. Most of that heart episode pain was coming from the bone close to the heart. Actually the heart was not normal. 
There were two causes of pain very close to each other. During the chest episodes, when they discharged me they told me they had checked me out and nothing was wrong with my heart. I can say this is a very low quality diagnosis since they're not speaking the truth. Why do I say that? I have explained, for the benefit of people who have never had chest pain what happens when people go to an accident and emergency with chest pain. If you have never been diagnosed with heart issues and go to accident and emergency with chest pain, you could have started a brand new heart problem. But what will happen to you at accident and emergency is doctors will take your ECG which is an unreliable way of proving your heart is normal. They also do a blood test for troponin which is a quantity that becomes high for a short while after a heart attack. And the fact you haven't had a heart attack in the immediate past is no proof you have not had any or that you won't have one as soon as you walk out of the hospital. But as I had had a heart problem for more than two years when I was admitted to Tullamore Hospital. It is not exactly nice to do those two shallow tests and treat me like a chest pain virgin, telling me my heart is normal, when a problem had already been established in the 2017 echo. On top of these two shallow tests, they did an echo at Tullamore Hospital. But from the medical report released, I learned the images were blurred and they are unable to diagnose me properly. A shallow finding of normal was added. My question is if the images are very blurred, you cannot be sure things are normal. So they are not very blurred after all. The fact I did poorly on the treadmill tests could perhaps be taken as an indication something is wrong with my heart. Even if they were not. Sure. They should suspect it. In that case, they lied at Tullamore Hospital that my heart was completely normal and I may have a touch of COPD but it does not need treatment. I feel it was a deliberate 100% lie. Yes, they cured one of my medical problems as described above. But they, like the rest, wish to fool me that my heart is completely normal. They didn't bother to explain to me why I was getting blood in my mouth. This is obviously some kind of medical condition. Getting blood from my mouth is happening once again to me in July 2023 which is the present time. As a patient, as an unwell person, getting blood in the mouth would worry me or make me believe I should get medical help. Over the years I have realized that no doctor will bother about it. I could say it but it always comes to null and void. I found that doctors then asked questions they don't want to answer. They go quiet. They changed the subject they play a game of tiddlywinks. I would assume if someone presents a complaint like that, in the first analysis the medical person's would investigate it if they do not investigate it as in my case, we can give the doctors the benefit of the doubt that they are sure it's not serious. If they are sure it's not serious they should say so. They should not just go quiet or change the subject when I ask about blood in my mouth when I show them the blood in my mouth so the diagnosis given a Tullamore hospital that Nothing was wrong with my heart was a low quality diagnosis although they did one good treatment and cure my chest pain which is coming from my bones this might be a bit confusing to people because I have set the component of my chest drain was cured by them. So why am I complaining? Maybe they'll cure everything. Well my problems are problem is persistently hearing lies from the doctors, of which I have already given some description. Problem 2 is chronically 
being ill, and are getting worse slowly as the years go by. I guess I do talk to people about my problems but it's been years ago that I stopped talking to them and I find their level of comprehension useless. I think they're also not interested. People are only birds interested in feeding and breeding. It is not fair that that I expected to share my all with birds meaning women. Because then responses of very low quality. I think the problem is of pressurizing me to do it. With people who cannot have a dialogue with me. I had not been happy at County West me living in. A menagerie of babies and West Saharan peasants. Gigantic trucks of baby food were maneuvering. With great difficulty around the crooked, narrow dirt road to keep pace with the high birth rate. It was like a hell of a lonely dump with them speaking to each other in their language and me being all alone. To cut the story short I left for Dublin, where they made another arrangement. I mean a place to stay, but that place it turned out didn't have anywhere for me to take a shower. And so I bolted out after a fortnight without a shower. I don't just bolt. The manager was not not reasonably behaved. The roommate kept the bath unsanitary and she never washed. Opening a tap made cockroaches come out of the walls and I saw in the refuse in the bathroom what looked like a human finger. Additionally, the unusual lady had a two-foot-long knife to cut vegetables. The manager said he knew about the knife from several people, but she was harmless. Anyway, I had just been told I had COPD, and the air in that room room was worse than any air I had ever breathed in my life. I mean he wanted me, and probably everyone else, to think that inmate was normal, no normal, so play acted like she was when receiving evidence to the contrary. I slept on a couch on the ground floor. No resident of any race or country had ever been willing to sleep in the same room as this long-term resident. I didn't want to live without any showers. So I was spending money on backpackers hostels for a few months until my money ran out. Out. This period is July, August, September, right to the end of 2018. I got sick in Dublin as well. I saw GP at Summer Hill practice. He was a temp. And he left. I showed him the pres prescription for just one week that the Liverpool cardiologist had given me seven or eight tablets including bisoprolol and sorbitrate. This GP recommended bisoprolol to be taken every day. After this GP left, I was still using summer 
A hill practice. This is in Dublin. One morning, I walked there and I wasn't feeling well at all. The lady doctor measured my blood pressure and I ended up seeing the reading. My systolic was around 200. I had not initially known a thing about high blood pressure. Below, I narrate how I came to know about high blood pressure in 2014 due to a friend's death from the same. I had a friend who died in 2014 and before that, I did not know anything about about blood pressure. After Regent's death, his medical records revealed that once a month he was seeing his GP, who was measuring his blood pressure and renewing his psychiatric medication. On each monthly visit, the blood pressure was quite high. But Regent's doctor had never told Regent that he had high blood pressure and of course had never given a medication for it. I am quite medically ignorant and did not know this. this basic fact that high blood pressure causes sudden death. And if someone's blood pressure fluctuates wildly, it is a bad thing. After Regent's death, I had been told about by nurse at Lloyd's Pharmacy that a systolic of 200 was a medical emergency and fortunately high blood pressure can be easily controlled with medication. Regent was having nosebleeds which is a symptom of high blood pressure. He would keep saying his drinking too much, and his smoking a few years ago must be causing these nosebleeds and he needed to sober up. Regent's sister told me after to his death one of her other friends in the same age group as me regent and herself had died after being hospitalized for something else. His blood pressure rose in the hospital and his systolic reached 300. The doctors did absolutely nothing for him there and he died in a few days, she said. Back to the my story. During these three months of staying in the hostels and moving from hostel to hostel because they don't give long-term stays I had some medical emergency on two occasions during this period I went to meet a hospital accident and emergency with violent vomiting. The second time, with some blood in my vomit, 